Hey guys, Dan here again. Today I want to show you how to upgrade the firmware on your Reolink cameras when they're connected to an MVR. I have a Reolink RLN 8-410E MVR. It shouldn't make that much of a difference what the MVR model is because the process I'm going to show you should work theoretically for all Reolink cameras. Now, as always, please remember if you find some value in this video, uh, go ahead and give it the thumbs up. Go ahead, click the subscribe button. And you know what? Leave some feedback below in the comments. I, I love seeing any feedback you might have for me. There are two main methods, uh, ultimately, to upgrade the firmware on your Reolink MVR. The first would be you go to the website, you download the firmware, you throw it on a USB stick. Now, most of the Reolink MVR should have a port either in the front or in the back, or in my case, I have one in both. Once you plug it in, you can locate a place to actually upgrade. It's called like Upgrade IPC Firmware, and you would be able to just simply select it from that USB be stick. I'm going to show you the other way to upgrade the firmware because I have a mixture of cameras and I don't want to accidentally upgrade the firmware to the wrong camera. If you do that, you might brick your camera. So you need to be careful. I'll show you where to locate what type of firmware you will need a little bit later in the video. There are two methods to individually upgrade the Reolink camera firmware. I'm going to show you the way where we're going to take out one of the cords from the back, the ethernet cords from the back of the MVR. I have actually a separate PoE switch and I'll simply power on there, put plug it into there. This is attached to my main network so my laptop should be able to find that camera no problem. There is one other way to power up your Reolink cameras if you do not have a separate PoE switch. Now that separate method to upgrade the camera firmware if you don't have a PoE switch would be to go locate the camera. You should have multiple ends where the cord comes out of the camera. One of the ends is obviously where you plug in the ethernet cable. The other is for an external power source. So if you have one of those lying around, you'd be able to plug it in, uh, leave the ethernet cord plugged in, and then you can connect that ethernet cord to your main network's router. Here I am using the Reolink client app. It's for a Windows, they also have it for Mac, but I will just go in the upper right corner, click that plus sign, and it will display a list of cameras that have automatically been found on my network. So I just need to put in a first time password. And since it's typically, the camera's typically plugged into the MVR, uh, this is like the first time it's initializing. So you have to set an initial password again. You'll have to rename it. And go ahead and click on finish. And now we see it's been added to my list here on the left side. We'll click the gear icon and pull up all the settings. And the first thing we want to do is make sure we understand what the uh, model number and the hardware version of the camera is. This is very important because now we go to support.reallink.com look for the firmware section and we need to ensure we'll find the latest date here yep. so we need to ensure that the firmware we're about to download and then upload to the camera actually is made for the camera that we're doing this for so i can see just double checking that it is so we'll download it download this zip file we'll go ahead open that and just i i'm just extracting the documents to the desktop now we go down to I believe it's maintenance here. Now this box here is going to factory reset the camera after the firmware is uploaded. I'm doing that because of the way how I upgraded. What I did is I set a password for this camera that I normally don't have. So by doing this, I'll just be able to unplug it from my network and plug it right into the MVR and it will simply work. If not, you'll just have to log into the MVR and enter your password that you set while doing this process. Either way is fine, it'll both get you to what you're trying to accomplish. So this upgrade could take up to five minutes. Um, once it's done, right, it, it tries to basically initialize the camera again. So like I said, you could just skip this and plug it right into your MVR and it should be displayed. But for this purpose, I'm going to enter the password, rename it, 
Uh, since it factory reset it, I'm going to remove the watermark in the upper left corner. Um, I had to rename it. I also have to check the record audio option again because I like to have the audio being recorded. So now I just look at the info again and yep, it looks like the upgrade was successful. So perfect, that's all there is to it. Now I'm just going to remove it from this view because it should already be part of my NVR view that I have. So I don't actually need to duplicate it here. So I'll just simply delete it and I'm good. Now that we got our firmware upgraded, we'll just simply unplug it, plug it in, wait a couple minutes. And remember, if you check the box on the firmware upgrade in the method I showed you, it'll factory reset your camera. So once you plug it in, it will automatically identify your camera and it shouldn't be an issue. Now, if you log back into your camera, one of the first steps is to change the password. What you'll have to do is if you change it to something else um, than it was previously, you'll have to log into the physical MBR, locate the cameras and make sure you update the password so that your camera will display properly when you're trying to view your cameras. Now that's it, that's all there is to it. I really hope you got some value out of this video. Like I said, leave some comments, give it a thumbs up and subscribe, it really help me out. I'll continue to produce more videos in order to help you with your POE camera journey. Appreciate you watching and see you soon.